some of the most intriguing works in art history are full of symbolism. During the Renaissance, and to a lesser extent the Baroque art period, the idea was often that artworks would tell a visual story to its viewers, who could often not read those stories themselves. In this video, I will discuss the role of several animals in paintings with a religious context. We'll look at the dog, ermine, goldfinch, peacock, rabbit, and the serpent. Of course, at times, the presence of an animal will be non-symbolic. For example, when the animal plays an important role in the story. This work by Peter Paul Rubens, for example, shows the presence of a serpent on the top left. Not necessarily an iconographic reference to the sin of mankind, but simply a reference to the biblical story of the brazen serpent that is depicted here. It's the story from the book of Numbers chapter 21, where Moses, standing on the left, beckons people to gaze at the serpent on the pole as a test of their faith. But more often than not, the presence of an animal in a religious painting has a deeper meaning. Do you know, for example, why there is a dog present in the wedding scene by Van Eyck? Or why Da Vinci portrayed this lady with an ermine? The symbolic meaning of animals in art were described in so-called bestiaries, of which quite a number have been written starting from the Middle Ages. Leonardo da Vinci, for example, wrote the bestiary, and the challenge is that not all these bestiaries assign the same symbolic meaning to the various animals. But let's dive into some popular animals to get a better understanding of their iconography. The meaning of the serpent is one of the most straightforward ones among the animals depicted in art. It stems from the story of Adam and Eve in paradise, described in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, when the serpent convinces Eve to eat a fruit from the tree of knowledge that God had forbidden them to eat from. A nice example is Michelangelo's fresco Temptation and Expulsion on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. He painted a serpent with a female torso and head, but others, like Lucas Cranach the Younger, just painted the serpent as a snake as we can see in these two works. More generally, the presence of a snake symbolizes the devil or sin, like in this work by Johannes Vermeer called Allegory of Faith, where we can see a snake on the floor being crushed by the cornerstone, which is a representation of Christ. The presence of dogs in a painting often is a symbol of loyalty and fidelity, because of its reputation of being such a loyal companion to people. The little dog in the foreground of Jan van Eyck's famous Arnolfini portrait is a good example. The painting is full of symbolism related to a good marriage, including the dog, which is a reminder that faithfulness is of utmost importance. Of course, the dog is not specifically a religious symbol, as it has also been used symbolically in non-religious art, maybe most famously so in Titian's Venus of Urbino, where it also symbolizes fidelity. Here is the Madonna of the Rabbit, painted in 1530 by Titian. It shows the Virgin Mary with baby Jesus and Saint Catherine of Alexandria. The white rabbit in Mary's left hand symbolizes fertility, but its white skin also signals the purity of Mary, as well as the mystery of her pregnancy. As rabbits were believed to be able to get pregnant without being impregnated, it was a perfect symbol for the virginity of Mary. And while the rabbit in the presence of Mary is mainly interpreted in a positive way, it also serves as a reminder that one should not succumb to lust, which is something rabbits are still known for today. The ermine, also known as a stoat, is a weasel kind of animal. We can see it here depicted in Leonardo da Vinci's Lady with an Ermine. Its most common interpretation is that it serves as a reference to moderation and purity. 
but it is also associated with fidelity and even pregnancy. The reason for this is that the ermine has a beautiful white skin and it was believed that the ermine only ate once a day, which was associated with moderation. As we can see in this portrait by Paolo Veronese, the ermine or the weasel does not always have to be alive, but can also be represented by someone wearing or holding its fur. And in this particular case, it represents the hope for a safe childbirth. The symbolic presence of a goldfinch is tied to a legend related to the crucifixion of Christ. The goldfinch likes to eat thistles and thorns, and when Jesus was on the cross, it picked a thorn from its crown. While doing that, a drop of blood fell on its head, causing the red spot on the head of the European goldfinch. Raphael included the bird in the Madonna of the Goldfinch, showing the Virgin Mary with John the Baptist on the left with a goldfinch in his hand, whom he offers to baby Jesus. The bird refers to the future crucifixion of Jesus and is more generally associated with the resurrection of Jesus, but also with the soul, sacrifice and death. Raphael was among several hundreds of artists who included the goldfinch. In the Madonna Lita, for example painted by Da Vinci, baby Jesus is holding a small goldfinch. And similarly so in this work from 1767 by Ciepolo. Today the peacock is mainly associated with pride and vanity. And that is the reason a peacock is included in Jan van Eyck's Madonna of Chancellor Rollin. We can see the peacock in the garden in the background, just below his hands, and it serves as a reminder to Rollin not to succumb to the sin of pride. But it is unlikely to be the reason that Fra Angelico and Filippo Lippi included it on the roof of the stable in their adoration of the Magi. The peacock actually represents immortality, based on the ancient belief that its flesh did never decay. It is a reference to the future resurrection of Christ and a reminder to people that their religion could grant them the eternal life. And while we are at this painting, on the roof we can also see a kind of falcon attacking a pheasant. The falcon and the peacock were also associated directly to Pierrot and Giovanni de' Medici, who were probably the commissioners of this work. So you can see that the interpretation of animals is not always as straightforward and there may be different motivations to include, but it is rarely just included for aesthetic purposes only. The peacock often shows up in the nativity scenes, so next time you see a renaissance painting about the adoration of the magi, you may want to look for the presence of a peacock, which is indeed present in this work by Sandro Botticelli. Now of course, there are more animals than the ones mentioned here used symbolically in art. There is for example the lion, which is associated with Saint Mark, and the eagle associated with Saint John the Evangelist, and I actually recently made a video about the iconography related to the four evangelists, which you can check out if you are interested. But I hope that this overview gives you some better understanding of the use of animals in paintings. I would love to hear from you about works that you like in which animals play a symbolic role. Just leave a comment down below. And also, if you have any questions about the symbolic use of animals in art, you can leave it in the comment section below and hopefully me or one of the other viewers can help you out. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button below this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.